This is a response to yesterday's video, and I'll leave the link to that in the description below. But yesterday's video was basically entitled, so National Socialism was Socialism, and a lot of people disagreed with me. Um, thousands of comments within hours, I couldn't reply to them all, so I'm going to reply to basically three points, counter-arguments that were made against it um, by the vast majority of you. These were the main three, basically. So the first argument was uh, people are saying that I don't know what socialism is. Second argument was Hitler allowed privatization, therefore he wasn't socialist. And he also, him and his party killed the socialists, so they weren't socialist. So basically they weren't socialist because of these three reasons, plus more, but these are the main three. So let me explain the history of the times in order for you to get the context so that I can explain what socialism is. So in the 1800s, you have two dominant theories. You basically, basically have conservatism, which is kind of like on the right, and then liberalism. Conservatism is we do not want to get involved in the economy because free trade, laissez-faire attitude, uh, leave alone. We don't really want to get involved because the markets and things will do its own thing, right? This is like super capitalism, I guess. Let the, let the markets decide where we go. And, and in reality, it's just slow progression, but that's another thing. Then you have liberalism as the alternative. So if you have two clashing ideologies, liberalism is a little bit more left-wing in a sense, or more centralist. So you have things like the social democrats in other countries and democratic socialists, there's always loads of different types. And these are basically, okay, we don't think that the conservative attitude of let's leave it alone and let the market do its thing, we don't think that's working because it's not really. There's evidence that it's not working. So, for example, in Britain, in the Boer War, uh, and just before that, the army realized that they didn't have enough recruits because, or there were so few recruits because the working classes were starving, Right. If you've got people with rickets and all this other stuff, then they can't fight a war. And if there is a future war, which there will be, if there's a future war, then we're going to have no recruits to fight it. So we need to do something about it. And this was the, this was like liberals, liberals grabbed all of this and like, oh yes, because they believe that a little bit of state intervention is good, right? So you have conservatism going, no, we don't want any state intervention. And you have liberalism going, we need a little bit more. Things like primary school education, things like minor reforms in the social welfare, little bit of pensions, that sort of thing, but only limited amounts. Some social housing, but only a little, little bit of amount. Then, roughly speaking, you have the First World War. It happened a bit before that, especially in Russia with 1905 um, revolution and stuff, but you basically have the First World War goes bang, massive social, economic, political upheaval, which results in every, well, chaos, basically. Now, what happened in general is that the conservative forces um, sort of fought back. No, 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 we don't want, we still don't want to intervene, blah, blah, blah. But the liberals realized something was going on. So basically, if you look at the situation in the First World War, you've got the French army mutinating, mutinating, mutinies and goes, we don't want to fight anymore, or we will defend, but we'll not attack. Then you also have the social revolution going on in Germany. It was a revolution. Then you've got the revolution going on in um, Russia, the civil war, the communists versus the whites. You've got all that going on. And in Britain, for example, they went, oh, no, we're, we're going to have a social revolution here. We better do something about it. So the Liberal Democrats at the time were like, we'll have homes fit for heroes, home fits for heroes. When the troops come back, we'll give them council houses. We'll sort out. We'll sort yourselves out. We'll give you social welfare. They realized we have to intervene a little bit more in the economy because the troops weren't, were dying. The guys were going off to the front to die and the working classes who were in the trenches were going, this isn't acceptable. What was the purpose of this? When we get home, there's nothing. We've got nothing. We're starving. We need social, you know, welfare um, or a revolution, depending on how far to the, um, to the, towards the communists they were. So that is the context up until the First World War. But what happens is, I mean, in Britain, Lloyd George's government, the Liberal government, is the last government that the Liberals ever had in majority. From then on, it's down, 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 down with the Liberals. And in its place came socialism, the rise of the Labour Party, but also others. 
And that's in Britain. In in Germany, you've got all sorts of wonderful things going on over there. Uh, you basically you have the age of extremes begins because you have basically the right going to the further right, or your, your right. So the, the right go to the further right, the left go to the left. And you have this age of extremes as... Obsborn was saying, right? A, the age of extremes, 1940 to 1991. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think it's a bit further on either side. I still think we're in an age of extreme now, but you get the point. So after the First World War, this chaos is, you know, this age of extremes is happening, but you've got the rise of the left, the rise of the socialists. And what they're saying is that the old order of the liberals and the conservatives isn't working. We've got plenty of evidence to say this isn't working. So what we're going to do is actually intervene in the economy. We have to intervene. We have to have state intervention. Now, the communists were going, you know, Marxists, they were saying, well, we need to seize the means of production. We need to take over the entire economy and have it run by the state, which is the people and the working classes, blah, blah, blah. So this is real state intervention. And people were saying in the comments, that's not what it is. Yeah. So <laughs> it is. It really is. It is. If you look at the context of the time, this is this is the... Antithesis. It's like, that was what it was, and that didn't work, therefore this works, we need state intervention. And that's what it is. That is what it is. And people are saying, well, yeah, but it's state intervention, that therefore makes you socialist. Well, it might do. Think about it. Think about it. It actually is. So anyway, the socialists are coming into power, or they're gaining power, or they, or they, they are in power in some sense of the word. And traditional Marxist theory says that, well, what we have is three classes, lower, middle, upper, and being basic, but we'll get rid of the top two and we'll have a communist utopia society with the, with the lower classes ruling everything. Right? They seize the means of production, they are ruling the world and blah, blah, blah. That's their theory in general. So there is seizure of the means of production and all that going on. That is part of the doctrine. But Hitler looks at this and goes, no, wait a second. He looks at this and says, actually, the class struggle going on is not as a result of market forces. And this isn't on itself. He actually says this, this isn't right. He looks at this and goes, no, it's not. The classes exist, but that's not the reason why they are like the way they are. The reason is, is because of the Jews. These classes only exist because of the Jews. So what Hitler says is we will get rid of the Jews all right, from our society. The Jews are making the upper classes do what they do and the middle class do what they do. And the workers are dumb because they are being led by the Jews, right? In Hitler's mind. So we will take the Jews out of society. And therefore, these classes no longer exist in the way that they do now. This becomes a... Like, the problems of the class warfare go away. And what we are left with, yes, we still have classes, but they are all one class. They are all not a class, they're a race. So let me explain it again. you got three classes of class warfare. We're going to get rid of the Jews, the racial problem. This leaves one race, one people, one class... Right? There's still classes within it, but they are, it's is socialism, not communism, right? There's, we're going to seize the means of production. The Aryan race of Germans is going to seize the means of production by taking the Jews out of the equation. And we're going to live in a, a socialist utopia. That is socialism. I don't, like, people are saying, no, that's, there's a difference between communism and socialism, people are mixing the two up. No, co communism is the seizure means of all production, and Hitler didn't privatize the industries. He didn't need to. If you, if you, if you believe that the Jews are what creates class warfare, right? If you believe that the Jews are what create class warfare, and you get rid of the Jews, there is no class warfare. Yes, there are classes, but there's no warfare going on because you've removed the bad elements of it. Yeah, you've removed the kulak. You've removed the. Um, the upper and middle classes and so on. You remove that and you have now formed not a classless society, but a raceless society in a sense. It's still the same sort of thing. They are interlinked. So you have 
you have a society that's made up of classes, but the overarching racial issue is the problem that caused the classes to be like they are in the first place. And now what you have is things like the Hitler Youth, the Hitler Youth, and the uh, the brown shirts and so on. But the Hitler Youth is saying, well, you know, because this isn't just like a Boy Scout brigade. This is the Hitler Youth is like, no, you you start maybe start at the bottom, but you can rise to the top because this is socialism. That's what they're saying. And they're saying, if you get rid of the bad elements, like the Jews, then these social classes are no longer a problem. You're all equal Aryans. It is socialism. It is absolutely socialism. Now, people will say, this isn't Marxist socialism. Well, neither was Leninism, and neither was Stalinism, and neither was Trotskyism. None of these were Marxists. You know, they are, they are Marxist in theory, but Marxist... Theory is not Marxist practice. This, this is all a branch of Marxism. And, and National Socialism is part of that branch. They are linked. The same way that Leninism is Marxism is the same way that National Socialism is Marxism. It's the same way Trotskyism is Marxism. Same way Maoism is Marxism. They are all branches of the tree. If you imagine the root being Marx is Das Kapital, right? And then above that are the branches of the tree. Well, National Socialism is part of that tree. It is the same thing. But it's linked, you know, it's all part of the same tree, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're all equal, right? Marxist-Leninism is different to Stalinism, which is different to Trotskyism, which is different to the Labour Party in Britain, which is different to the social parties all over Europe and, and different again to National Socialism, but it is still a socialism. It is absolutely a socialism. And then if you think about it this way, people are saying, yes, but, you know, this is the second point people brought up, but Hitler allowed privatization. Yes, he's not communist. There's a difference between socialism and then communist. So capitalism's here, communism's here, in between is socialism, roughly speaking. So you have, but it's not like, it's not like there's a box of communism, right? This is exactly what uh, communism is, and there's no variation at all. No, there is a variation. There is absolutely a variation. Marx, what Marx said in Das Kapital is not what Lenin, and Lenin himself said, or what Stalin said, or what you know any of these people said. Because, it, because basically, as Richard Evans points out in one of his books, there is such vagueness in this that it it. it it allowed these branches to happen. It's kind of like, in a sense, uh, Judaism or Christianity or Muslimism. They're all part of the same religion. They're just different branches. So let's go back to the political selection for just two seconds. So capitalism is, is there, socialism, and then communism. So if socialism is the seizure of all means of production, which some of you are arguing, then what's communism? What's the difference? There isn't any. There is a difference, though. Communism and socialism aren't necessarily the same. They are two branches. Of the, of the same tree in a sense. Communism is the seizure of all means of production in this communist lovely lovely utopia and whatever else. That is what communism is. Socialism is a halfway house between capitalism and communism in a broad sense of the word. And it is, an, it is, an, it is itself a spectrum. So you can have capitalist elements in the socialism. That's kind of what it is. That's, the, that's kind of the definition of it. You might have private property. Maybe maybe you've nationalized the industries and the railways and, and got an, an NHS, right? Great. That means you are socialist, but it doesn't mean that you've gotten rid of private property. It doesn't mean that you, you, there is all railways are nationalized necessarily. You could have 90% nationalization, but not actually full nationalization. You can have, you can claim to be communist, but still have a new economic policy, the NEP, as Lenin did, right? So... Yeah, socialism is the halfway house between the two. And some of you say, well, the Wikipedia says, or Google said, like some guy was going, well, I gave a dictionary definition. I don't know where he got the definition from. Maybe even Marx himself. Well, it doesn't matter what Marx says. The, by the time you get to the 30s, when all this is going on, realistically, Marx is pretty much long gone. You know, the, the, the theory is still there, but the practice, the practicality has dictated that his theory isn't working the way that it should. This is the problem with it, because he, he's kind of made it so vague, and no one really knows how to get to communism, that they're all trying to 
they're, they're going through a socialistic phase in order to get to communism because they don't know how to get there. This is this is the ultimate problem in a sense. So, yeah, to to say that well, Hitler didn't take out the industrialists as he said in Str- I said it in the video. Strasser says in 1930, we we're socializing the people. Therefore, he has no reason to nationalize the industries because the industries are working for him. If they worked against him, I guarantee he would have nationalized them. But he didn't need to because the the people, remember the people are his working class in a sense. They are working for him. So he has no reason, absolutely no reason to fight against it. And people will say, okay, but... um, Hitler killed the the socialists in the Ernst Rom thing. Well, yeah, he killed like a thousand. The SA, which was the socialist organization which Ernst Rom was on the top, existed from 1945. This this putsch or whatever you want to call it happened in like the mid 30s. Well, in the late 30s, Kristallnacht happened, and it was the SA that performed it. The SA, the socialists, went in, smashed up Jewish shops and synagogues, businesses, they didn't they didn't target their houses, they didn't do that, they, sh- they smashed up the shops, because it was a socialistic kind of, not revolution, but kind of a revolution going on. Goebbels was socialist, we know that um, Mussolini was socialist, There's a, it's socialism, it is actually socialism, and it begins to make sense, but the, yes, there is absolutely a difference between socialism and communism, right? Communism is this, we all are equal, everything's owned by the state, and we live in this utopia where some people say there's no government, but whether that's true or not, again, it's down to interpretation. You've got this stateless communist utopia, all right, fair enough. But socialism isn't communism, and socialism isn't necessarily capitalism, and you can absolutely have um, the capitalism inside socialism. For example, uh, you have the... NEP by Lenin, which is capitalism, and it's, it, you know that that is what it is. So Hitler allowed privatization to happen, yes, because you've taken out the bad apples of the thing, and I say bad apples in his mind, the bad apples, and this is formed this classless, well, raceless society of Aryans, right? And so, so, so Hitler takes the Jews out of the equation. This forms this racial Aryan race thing going on. But while there are classes, there's no class warfare anymore. And thus, you don't, as he says to Strasser in 1930, you don't need to, we don't need to nationalize the industries or take away private property because the people are the state. This is a dictatorship by the proletariat in a sense, but it's a dictatorship by the Aryan people. It is socialism. They are, as he says, we are socializing the people. Therefore, we don't need to seize the means of production in the communist sense because we have seized, the the, the Aryans have seized the, the means of production. That's, and so this is socialism. This is absolutely socialism. So what happens if we ask an actual uh, Nazi, <laughs> a neo-Nazi? Well, I actually did that the other day. So the other day, uh, before the video that was published yesterday, before it came out, I actually asked a Nazi on the channel, the Christoph One. Uh, he was going on about the Jews. Now, at this point, I was assuming, and you can see my comment, I was assuming that Nazis like him did not realize that their own political ideology was socialist. So I actually say, National Socialists are trying to distort history by claiming their political ideology isn't communist or Marxist, really, I should have said. They're claiming that they're on the right of politics when the reality is they are socialists, and therefore on the left. In fact, this is what exactly what Hitler said in Mein Kampf. They are socialists, but not Marxist socialists. And the reason Hitler hates the Jews is because he wants to build a socialist state for German Aryans and other races aren't welcome, especially the Jews. Equally, Hitler was also anti-Christian, but it seems certain Nazis like yourself have not realized this. And then he replied, this is a Nazi, Tick. National socialists, national liberals, national conservatives have one thing in common. Nation. Nation that unite them by language, land, tradition, history, patriotism. Above political divide. Above political divide. Nation stands high and mature. Tribalism being it Aryan, German, or Judaic, Israel. He's poor language here. Always asserts its unique role in the world. Chosen people are racist people. NSDAP 
had source in Marxism and Leninism. This is a Nazi saying this. This is an actual Nazi. National Socialist German Workers' Party had source in Marxism and Leninism. Goebbels once wrote that Hitler could become a leader as big as Lenin. I don't know if that's the case. I need to get the Goebbels diaries. I know Goebbels was a socialist. Uh, you see comments in Soviet Union persecuted and exterminated people according to class where only proletariat was to remain. Jews were thriving in henchmen's role and government. In Germany, National Socialist Labour Party persecuted and exterminated according to biology only Aryans were to remain. So he's made that's there it is in black and white. Jews were most Jews were first most useless marked for extermination. No one required bankers, businesses, and professionals roles filled by Germans. Word Holocaust should be banned, hence no problems. Well, that's another thing. So yeah, you can see it right here. He is making the distinction between the Marxists and the socialists in the National Socialists. He's and he's saying that it has its source in Marxism and Leninism. This is an actual Nazi before my video came out. This is an actual Nazi saying this, right? And you can see it. I mean, regardless of what the Marxists want to say, oh, they're not socialists, right? You can say that, but it, as he, as this Nazi has said, NSDAP had source in Marxism and Leninism, and you see communists. Uh, exterminating people based on class, whereas the Germans basically in the Nazi party persecuting and exterminating people based on biology, but it is still socialism. But the point of this channel is is not to to blow smoke, uh, and is not to kind of go the the German generals are right and Hitler was a madman and everything you thought about the war was correct, and there's no reinterpretation. I'm just going to tell you what you want to hear. That's not the purpose of this channel. That is absolutely not. So all these people who are jumping ship, I say all these people, it's like 200 of you. All these people who are jumping ship going, this is the worst thing I've ever heard. You're wrong. I'm going to jump ship now. Unsubscribe, right? But anyway, half of these channels are actually fake um, because I have actually seen this now. There is actually people posting multiple accounts, and I've seen it for myself, so I know it is happening. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm not saying everybody who jumped ship wasn't this. I'm saying that there's a good portion of them who were just like, I'll delete some of my own accounts, but not all of them. But anyway, the point of the matter is that, oh, you've been challenged. I, I've heard something that I don't want to hear. La la la, I'm going to say you're wrong and unsubscribe. That's the wrong thing to do. Do you want to know why? Because that's not the purpose of this channel. This channel is not, as I say, to blow smoke and go, yes, you are... Correct all the time. Yay. No, it's not to do that. I, it doesn't matter who you are, what part of the political spectrum, what part of the economic spectrum, what part of the social spectrum, or whatever. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do. The purpose of this channel is to challenge you, is to make you think, to rethink, and rethink again. Hold on a second. What about this? How about this? Is that really the case? Da 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 da. -da. And that, that's the thing. When I was looking, because I'm doing, because what well, this is another thing as well. People were saying, Oh, I can't wait for your anti-Holocaust documentary. Like, right, the purpose of me reading through Mein Kampf in the first place was to find information on the origins of the of the Holocaust. I am doing a Holocaust documentary, right, at some point. I don't know when, but I thought I'll begin now. People are, like, upset. Oh, you need to be a better source. How can I get better sources? I, <laughs> have you actually read this? Have you, have you actually, because a lot of people are saying, yeah, I read it and I, I see exactly what you're saying. There's a lot of people, most people yesterday said, I actually agree with you, Tick. And, and, for, and I am actually ashamed. I'm actually ashamed because I only went through this last week and a half and realized that this was the case. Before then, I thought that he was right wing the end. And now I know different. I've seen it. And I, I now that I've seen it, I can't unsee it because it's like, oh, yes. How did I not figure this out before? I cannot believe that I did not figure this out before. It's unreal. Absolutely unreal. The Hitler Youth to the, 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 the Labour Front to the KDF and, and, uh, not the K, yeah, the other one and, and whatever, everything. It's like, oh, that makes sense. He doesn't like Prussian officers, but he doesn't mind people like Modal. Oh, why is that? Oh, it's because he's socialist. He's, he's thinking of the class lines. He's definitely influenced by it. Um, his policy in Russia now makes sense. His policy against the Jews makes sense. This reinforces the Holocaust because it's his social policy and he was a socialist. It reinforces it. It says, 
we are his talking about we want to create an Aryan utopia is him saying we want to get rid of the Jews. Right? It, it's saying that it's not going we need to exterminate them. It not necessarily means that, but it means we need to get rid of the Jews in order to make this socialist society of Aryans, right? That's what he is saying. So this reinforces that. So those people, like three of you who went, oh, this, you're going against the Holocaust, this reinforces it. The, the camps, the concentration camps, which are basically the gulags, you know, for, and this is the thing. So this is, I didn't mention this in the video, but it's tied in. So Hitler thinks that if you create a classless Aryan society, I say classless, but it's, you know, you create this Aryan society where there's no class warfare and Below it, you've got slaves, Slavs, which is the Russians, because they're going to take over Russia and take the Slavs off the Jews. Because in Hitler's mind, the Jews rule, rule Russia. If we take the Soviet Union, we, we, if the Jew, if Hitler takes the Jews out, they will have a class of Slavs and slaves in order for the German Aryan race of, um, you know, no other race, pure race of class socialism will have a bunch of slaves to, to rule over. Because that is his vision. He says it in this second book. And and it also in this one at the end. And that is his vision. So you're like, yeah, that's socialism. That's into that's massive intervention in the economy. And that's and the society. And yeah, this is socialism. Absolutely, this is socialism. To say it isn't now, I I don't know. I don't know how to I can't on like I've seen like people saying, oh, you just made this up. No, I, I was on your side in this sense. For those of you still at the end of this video still don't believe it or still haven't fathomed it, right? I was on your side days ago, really. We, you know, a couple of weeks back. And then I went, oh, yeah, no, this makes sense now. This makes sense. This absolutely 100% makes sense. And now that I've seen it, it all is fitting in. Everything, every little piece of the puzzle. And there's more to be... I'm going to have to rethink elements of it but yeah this, it's all every time i think oh yeah that that's another thing that that fits into this as well and lots of people are saying i've known this for years i've tried telling people they're not listening yeah yeah that's for two seconds let's claim this guy is 1000 percent socialist right regardless of whether you believe he is or not let's say he is that does not mean that the labor party in britain or the leninists or any new socialist government or party that ever arises from the grave or whatever else pops back into existence in Russia or whatever, right? None of these socialist governments are necessarily racist. Just like there's branches of Christianity, you know, Christians kill each other all the time or whatever, look at Ireland, but just because they don't agree does not mean they're not the same, right? They, they are the same. They're, they're Christians, but then there's branches of Christianity. Well, there's socialisms, and there's branches of socialisms. And there's branches of communisms, and the branches of capitalism, blah, blah, blah. Right? It is not as clear-cut as, this is what socialism is, end of discussion. No, it isn't. And this is a branch of socialism. And I hope my three... Three fingered sort of doing this thing has, has helped you realize that. But if not, read the sources. And, you know, people are quoting Richard Evans, which is interesting because I'm going through a Richard Evans book at the minute. And it's like, yeah, but not just because a historian disagrees doesn't mean that this isn't true. Right? So, so I'm going to leave it there. If, if you still disagree, um, Feel free to air your opinions. If there's a common sort of, well, you didn't take this into account, then I'll do another video explaining that if I have to and so on. But I'm just going to ask you guys, you know, if, if I ever come out with anything and you disagree with it, just go, thanks for the video, Tig. I disagree. Here's a counter argument. That's, that's what, oh, I'm so offended I want to unsubscribe. All right. I mean, you've not the purpose of this channel is to challenge you intellectually that that's that's the point of this this is history this isn't sort of like we're going to make stuff up and pretend that everything's happy yay no you, this is a, this is an intellectual challenging subject 
And people say, you need to stay away from politics. I can't. It's interlinked. So, yeah. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there. And as I say, let me know if there's anything you want me to come cover again. I will I will cover again. It's fine. I can do make another video. No, no problem. So I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing or unsubscribing, depending. And uh, bye for now.